week in VVV Hasu. So countdown going on now, and we should be getting in this game shortly. Yeah, so it will be VVV Hasu versus Get Slammed. And I don't think I've ever cast, or I don't remember casting a Protoss versus Zerg on Belshir Beach. So this will be a little bit of a learning experience for, um, for me as well in terms of what strategies and, uh, and what strategies are used and executed. And I'm also curious to know if Hasu and Get Slammed actually practice against, you know, say Zerg versus Protoss, Protoss versus Zerg on this particular matchup, if they actually tried out new strategies, because this is probably a map that they are really not familiar with. Yeah, and we'll introduce the players here with VVV Hasu spawning as the green Protoss player in the northwest position here. And then Convergence Get Slammed spawning as the blue Zerg in the southeast corner. Uh, and this is Belshire Beach Winter, the new map that we've been talking about. And as Kurt had mentioned, these players, you know, they don't play this map on the ladder a lot. So these are probably uh, going to be, you know, new strategies that, that we'll be seeing from the players. Or maybe they'll open with something a little bit more conservative if they're not, uh, you know, aware of all the different features and attack paths of this map. Yeah, I'm trying to compare this map right now to the Belshire <coughs> Beach that I know. There is a natural expansion right outside. I believe there are... Um, there should be destructible rocks. No, there's actually just a very, very wide ramp point. If I'm taking a look at this correctly, actually, I am completely mistaken. There is um, a ramp leading up to your natural expansion. There's a rather narrower choke point, but it's still rather wide. We'll see what exactly the front door will look like coming in from Hasu. And this is going to be interesting to see how Hasu tries to seal off his front door. If he's going to seal it off at this location here, or if he's just going to go for that Forge Fast Expansion. And I'm wondering if he's actually practiced a Forge Fast Expansion here on Belshire Beach. Yeah, it's a really, really wide uh, ramp. It's basically about as wide as the uh, the ramp, maybe even a little bit wider on Taldarim Altar. So maybe he's using some of what he's learned in other maps to... Uh, you know, get some placement going here, but he's going to need at least, uh, I think, two pylons worth of buildings wide to block off that ramp completely. We see he has placed down the uh, the pylon in the natural of Get Slammed, so he's going to try to prevent the fast expand. Get Slammed has the spawning pool about halfway done and just now taking in his own extractor. So he's going to be going for uh, gas pretty early here for a, a fast expand build. Yeah, and I'm real, a little concerned for <laughs> Hasu right now. This map only has two spawning locations. So trying to go for a forge fast expansion where your opponent knows exactly where you are and may not go hatchery first is a little bit of a dangerous maneuver. We'll see what the strategy will be. Hasu may try to get a nexus first, but a hatchery going to be built and can't. That was a yeah. really strange. What do you make of that? That's the fastest way to spend 75 minerals I've ever seen. I'm not quite sure uh, what the reason for was that. Or uh, the reason for that was it is going to prevent Hasu placing down that nexus immediately. Uh, he goes for a cannon first after a bit of delay there, but now he's going to get that nexus. And uh, yeah, get slammed saying that uh, he built that hatchery there, and then I guess he didn't believe that he had canceled it. Um, I think that was a bit of a mistake on his part, and his natural is going to be very late compared to the Protoss player. Yeah, you can see Zergling is now trying to take down this pylon over here. The only thing that I could possibly think of that. Uh, wait, would actually perhaps work out is trying to go for like an evolution chamber block where you right. build a hatchery and then you cancel it and then you utilize the creep that's there and then try to build an evolution chamber and then that's just going to sit there there's creep there's broodlings that's all and that's always a ticking time bomb but hasu is in a very very good position now only two or four zerglings are making their way out three Zerglings making their way out, and I believe that one Photon Cannon on the front door will be able to pick off at least two of, or one of them, if not two of them. And it looks like the Zerglings are just going to sit there and hold at the front door position. Yeah, Hasu has a probe there, so he's going to be able to throw down a, uh, a gateway or a cybernetic score to wall off here, and he's going to get the uh, the cybernetic score. So he's been able to get away with basically one cannon at the moment, and now we see a double expansion coming out from Get Slammed, and I think this is a good reaction on his part. He's already a little bit behind, losing those minerals and that drone from that uh, basically that delay of what he was trying to do for Hasu there. And But this uh, this double expansion, I think, is the right choice. He's already got his gas, and he's got speed about to finish, so... That investment in gas early on by him is going to put him even farther behind economically as Hasu already on two bases here and chronoing out probes. Yeah, what I think Hasu needs to do next is Hasu should be going for a Stargate. And the key question will be whether or not he actually scouts out that third base. If he scouts out the third base 
and he's able to put pressure either with phoenixes or void rays at these two locations um i'm not sure if get snap will actually have enough queens or be able to get enough um spore crawlers in, in the proper locations get slap now sitting on 27 drones he is running off of two bases but if he's able to macro up and get into a heavy saturation on three bases I can't imagine Hasu will like what he sees when he actually scouts it out. Yeah, it looks pretty tough to take a third base here. The uh, the third is away from your natural, and it's got a two paths of attack that are pretty wide. So I imagine that a, a Protoss player might have difficulty securing a third anywhere on the map, and getting a, a free third as a Zerg player is always something that's uh, fun to do. And you're right, if Get Slammed is able to get up to a, a decent saturation without the... Uh, any sort of harassment by Hasu, it's going to be uh, trouble for Protoss. Yeah, it looks like Hasu is going to instead try to go for perhaps a, a six gate push is normally what you do off of two bases. So a six gate push may work out well. He's currently warping in three additional gateways back inside his main base with one Artosis pylon sitting there. And we'll see what is going to come of this in just a moment. Harvester count 36 compared to 39. But as the third queen is about to hatch at the third base, I believe Get Slammed is just going to be able to take off and really get his economy up and running. Yeah, this is interesting by Hasu. He placed down those gates, but I'm not sure he's actually going to do anything with them. He uh, could have been chronoing out a plus one upgrade at this point. He had the gas for it, and it could be done by now. Uh, sort of in time for any sort of uh, timing push. Instead, he's going to place down a robotics facility. So I think he's going to try to get an observer into the base of Get Slammed and maybe go for some sort of late game strategy. Yeah, we'll see how all of this works out. He has three warp gates. He doesn't have the real resources to really warp anything out. Perhaps a couple more sentries at the very least. But he's also going into hallucination. And if he tries to go hallucinated colossi with colossi, that that may feign and, and, and may um, just confuse Get Slammed just a little bit. And we'll see how all of this works out as we do see an overlord in the center. Get Slammed with a lot of map control, keeping track of both Zelnaga towers here. And one thing that I do like about the um, the winter version is that there's actually a, a, a giant crevice in the center of the map as opposed to untraversable high terrain. It was one of those things that was kind of confusing. It almost looked like you could cut the map across the center, but with this giant gaping hole in the middle, you know that that is just a giant dead zone. And we see the first hallucinated phoenix going out, so they're going to be able to get a full scout. And I like this play by Get Slammed. He's placed down a spore crawler at every base, so... If some sort of Void Ray or Phoenix play was coming, he'd be covered. If DT play is coming, he's covered with detection. So uh, he's pretty prepared to deal with most any tech coming out from Hasu at the moment. And we do see that robotics bay coming. So uh, Colossi going to be on the way for Hasu. And like you mentioned, maybe he might go with a bit of a hallucinated Colossi play as well. And if uh, we don't see any overseers or get slammed, he might be focusing down the wrong Colossi. That could spell trouble. Yeah, and this is going to be interesting as well, as we now see Get Slammed a little bit confused on what he needs to go for. He's going for a Spire and a Hydralis then. And what Hasu did was by using those hallucinated phoenixes, he's kind of feigning that he is going air, but perhaps not as Hasu now going into seven gateways. So this is going to be some sort of two base timing. Probe production has stopped coming in from Hasu, sitting on 49 probes on two bases, and he needs to attack in the next minute or two otherwise the economy of get slammed is just going to be simply too much yeah i imagine he's going to go when the second colossi comes out that's basically going to time up with uh, the extended thermal lance finishing as well plus one has already finished uh again if he had been upgrading a little bit earlier he could have maybe had a second upgrade done for this timing as well but uh, like you said, he really needs to push out and do some damage as Get Slammed, taking a fourth at this point, adding a lot of tech structures, the Hydralis Den, uh, Roach Speed, as well as that Spire. So he's going to be prepared for pretty much anything. And we do see that Hasu is pushing out. He's got another Colossus, a second one on the way that's going to meet up with this push. And we'll see what kind of damage he's able to do. Yeah, Zealots are now warping into the midfield as well. There is going to be seven gateways. This is really going to be really um, supply blocked right now as Hasu sitting on 122 over 124. Another round of warping, not possible as he has, he needs 14 food in order to do so. He has Immortals and Colossi in this group as well and they may get focused down and this may be very important as the Stalkers, Sentries, Zealots and all the units are just simply making their way out. Those Hallucinations do have a limited lifespan and they do need to do a bit of a push in just a moment. The Overseer, not quite sure where it went, but it needs to get back into this fight in order to protect this third base. 
Yeah, he needs to get those Immortals up in front to tank a little bit of that damage, and he wants to make sure that the uh, the Colossi that's hallucinated is in front as well. And if Get Slammed wastes some time fighting the uh, hallucinations, it could be big for Hasu. Now he's getting a force field on that ramp by the natural, but a lot of roaches here in the third for Get Slammed. I feel like he could just crush this army if he's able to get all of his army together, but his forces are split, and Hasu needs to do some damage. Okay, so Hasu really not controlling his units all too well. There are force fields over here. Corruptor's now engaging, and now in comes from the far side. There's some more force fields. He is splitting up the army, and if he's able to pick and choose his battles, this may work out well. Reinforcements are coming in. Colossi are going to get taken down, but the Roaches are just still stuck in a very bad position as well. Another Colossi going to get taken down, but now we have four Corruptors in the air as the Roaches, many of them unable to engage in a Stalker versus Roach battle. But without one Colossus, this is looking really bad. And finally, a Colossus shows up on the field. Overlord's going to get taken down, but this is not looking good for Hasu as he is now behind by about 30 food. Yeah, pretty poor control there. That was the timing was a little bit later than usual, and he really needed to have expert control and expert force fields there to make that work as he's pushing in once again. This time, going to get a, a better surround, get slammed has no force fields to deal with and he's got these corruptors focusing down that colossus the roach is doing their best to scoot and shoot to try to take down the remaining stalkers as well and Hasu i think really needs to start focusing down these corruptors to give his colossi a chance he's still producing them so he's not doing any sort of tech switch and get slammed is just using these corruptors to take down those all-important colossi not a lot of aoe for hasu he's at 89 to 137 get slammed has his four bases and he's just repelling this timing attack from hasu yeah, even though Get Slammed is not really doing anything off of this 4th base, it is still there, and Hasu's push, unless by some miracle, does a lot more damage. Uh, Get Slammed is just going to recover from this much more easily, as Hasu does not even have his 3rd base yet. He is just continuing with this pressure, hoping that it deals a lot more damage than it should. As the Roaches and Corruptors now engage, the Stalkers ne really need to focus down the Corruptors. There goes one Stalker, oh, there goes another, and now the Roaches are going to fall prey to those Colossi, but the now in come the Zerglings as well. The Zerglings able to catch up, and this is not looking good. A nice surround by Get Slammed, and I think Get Slammed has simply such a large army, he can almost attack move straight into Hasu's base. Yeah, and there's the GG from Hasu. Uh, he had an interesting timing there, and the, the fact that he mixed in those Immortals and the Colossi that were hallucinated, he probably could have done uh, maybe a few more, maybe another set of two Immortals, another Colossi or two, and I think focusing down those Corruptors with the Stalkers Especially when he placed those force fields at first, as he, it looked like he was retreating, he was able to keep a number of the roaches away. And if that at that point you pull all your forces back, you focus down the corruptors, and then you can re-engage with no corruptors on the field. Those colossi doing huge damage to the roaches, but instead he kept focusing the roaches, which were behind the force fields. I think that was a pretty big mistake in the micro of the battle. Yeah, that battle just really didn't unfold well. You can take a look at the army value. Hasu with an enormous lead at some, um, at one point, and then not engaging, not putting the Immortals in the front, also getting those hallucinations out a little bit too early. So by the time, uh, by the time they engaged, they simply disappeared, and that could have been four, five, six more force fields. And I think that was just a really, really bad decision making. Hasu um, needed to perhaps get a little bit more practice on Belshire Beach. Belshire Beach has a uh, has a lot of different wide open flanks as we saw where um, the force fields aren't that effective, needing four force fields, three force fields to really block and split up an army.